So all those black specks are going to disappear, and when that goes away, uh, you're not going to see those little cover bolts down there in the bottom, bottom right uh, and left. But you will see that the, the, the lander foot pad, and, and uh, we'll be studying that uh, in the next couple of days, you know, looking at the amount of dirt on it, looking at the kind of dust, trying to figure out what the distribution of particle sizes and all this kind of stuff that, that's, uh, that, that, that's really critical to, to putting our instruments down on the surface. And, and up and been paying attention, you know that uh, you're not supposed to be expecting any uh, seismology to come out of us anytime real soon. Uh, but we're going to be uh, spending the next couple of weeks uh, looking at that, that ground and finding the, exactly the best place to put our seismometers down. It's a very, very nice looking picture. It looks pretty flat. We're, we're very level. I think uh, we're less than uh, two degrees of tilt, which makes our, our job very easy to do. So now that we've landed, we start an initial assessment phase. So the first thing we'll do is assess the health of our spacecraft and then the health of the instruments that went with us, and then look at our landing site. We've got the first picture down, very much thanks to Marco, and now we want to look at it in more detail and understand where can we place the instruments on the surface to get the best science return. Once we've deployed WTS successfully to the surface, then we return and we pick up our heat probe, or HP cubed. And we're going to deploy HP cubed to the surface as well. And after we finish the deployment of all our instruments, making sure they're all in a good location, all in a good state, then it begins the last portion of the mission before we can actually do the full science return. We've got to do the penetration of the mole of HP cubed underground, going up to 16 feet underground. And then we also do commissioning of our seismometer, fine tuning it so that it'll to detect all those very subtle vibrations on Mars to get that great science return. This entire process, just getting the instruments to the ground, takes approximately two to three months. So it's going to take a little bit of time to get to that point, and then another couple of months for the mold to penetrate through the ground and to do the fine tuning of the seismometer. And at that point, we'll be sitting back and listening for those Mars quakes and measuring the vital signs of Mars, getting all that great science return. We're really looking forward to that.